I'm Dante Greer. I'm a 6'6", 210-pound, 10-star recruit out of Mount Verde Academy, and I'm about to make my college decision. Yes, I said 10 stars, and no, I'm not tripping. Here, let me explain. So believe it or not, this is my high school's first year having a football team since 2015. Usually, that would mean we're expecting a down year, but going to an academy school known for sports meant our team would be the center of national attention off rip. That alone brought some dogs out here, and along with the recruiting the staff did, we had a powerhouse team in the division off the bat. But on top of that, this was the starting quarterback's first year playing football in pads. Yeah, it's my first year in pads, but let me explain. See, I actually started playing football in the 8th grade through Summer 7 on 7s. What started as me stepping out of my comfort zone for fun turned into an amazing use of my time, as by the time I hit the 12th grade, I was a 3-star QB based off of just my 7 on 7 and camp tape. I had made noise at every major tournament, as well as putting my throws on prime display at every rivals camp. See, I didn't pay it much mind though, as football was never my priority or goal to be honest. I just used it to get away and have fun with my friends who did play and me being able to throw and being tall fit right in with that. Then came our senior year of high school and the school says we're finally getting our football team back. I was hype along with some of my other friends and I was a heavy recruiter myself, hitting up everyone I knew through my years of 7-on-7 seven seven in camps and before you knew it like I said at the beginning, a powerhouse with the state championship year one. We blew through any and every challenge placed in front of us this season with our school already getting hella shine from hoop, football just amplified the juice of being a Mount Verde student athlete a hundred times more. Especially for myself, the 6'6 star QB who led a team to a state title on top of what he's been doing for the school for years. Now you know my football story, let's get into what I do when I'm not on the field. You know how I said after what I've been doing for the school already? Well, basically, we've been one of the best basketball teams in the nation since I've been going here. And they were tough before me, too. But yeah, how I said football wasn't really my priority, I've been hooping literally since four years old. Why do you think I went to Mount Verde even though they didn't have a football team at first? That's because me and Cooper Flag have been running the nation for the past two years. Remember when I said 10-star recruit earlier? Well, here's the other five. Unlike football, I've been a five-star recruit in hoops since the middle of my junior year. Now on the court, I'm a 6'6'2 guard who can score from all three levels and play make. The reason it's so hard to stop us is because I came up modeling my game as an ISO player. I figured if I can get by anyone by myself, then what could someone do on a court of five? And when you have Cooper Flag on the wing, that couldn't be more true. When me and him get in the pick and roll, it's nasty. I can pull up off the dribble, I can take it to the cup with a lay or a dunk, and with Cooper on the roll, watch your head, bro. But now you see why I came here and why my parents limited me to seven on seven and no contact so I wouldn't hurt myself before basketball started up. But with all that being said, now let's get down to this decision. It's that time and I'm literally getting spammed on social media with me photoshopped in different college jerseys and photos from my past visits, fans, and even some players begging me to go to their school. The things I have to think about, my inner circle wants me to go to Duke and just continue to hoop with Cooper, which I'm not gonna lie is a very high possibility. Injury chances in basketball are lower and me and Cooper can continue to run the nation. Or, now that I'm a five star in football, I can literally go anywhere I want. I'm really considering doing what I did just last year and find a place where I can play both and just show the world that I'm him for real. If I did that, I could go to a school with good programs on both sides like Bama or UNC. But that's all I got man, it's time to finally make my decision but before I do, let's weigh out my options. Option 1. I could go to Duke with Cooper and continue to go crazy. We'd be favorites to win it all as me and Cooper would be teaming up with Jared McCain, Tyrese Proctor, and the rest of that stack squad. The highlights would be endless and that lineup can get a bucket positions 1-5. through five. Next option is I continue to hoop but I go my own way, go to UConn. Coming off a natty win with some of the best players and coaches in the nation, I can continue to hone my craft and going there would put me on the right track to the NBA draft for sure. Option 3, I continue to play football as well which changes my options a little. Obviously Duke or UConn wouldn't be a good selection for football if I want to compete and hopefully one day play in the NFL. Some teams that I thought of so far that would be a good landing spot for this option are like I said earlier, a school like Bama or UNC, Oregon. And Clemson. These schools not only have high football prestige, but also made a run in the tournament last March, giving me ideal situations in both sports. Obviously, there are some other options, which is why before I make my decision, I'm asking y'all what you think I should do. As you see, the nation's on the edge of its seat waiting to see what I do next, as I have the potential to go to any university and take over any sport, and possibly both. I'm one of the best quarterbacks and shooting guards in the nation and not many if any people have ever been able to say that sentence. I'm an elite company and I have all of America at my fingertips. Should I just stick to hoop, take over NCAA basketball and eventually the NBA, start a journey to become one of the best two guards of all time in the company of Kobe and Jordan? Do I only play football, lock in on my craft and try to join the likes of Brady and Montana as one of the best throwers of the football? Or do I shock the world, continue to play both, and start a club of my own, one of the greatest quarterbacks and shooting guards of all time, and make my mark on sports forever? It's a big decision, and that's why I got y'all here with me. My one choice can potentially change the history of sports forever. I'm going to talk to some of my closest friends and family before I make it official, but let me ask y'all one more time. 
Where do you think I should go? It's almost time for me to make my commitment decision, but there's been one conversation I've been avoiding throughout this whole process, and it's about time I can't dodge it anymore. Now, Dante, I know you got a lot going on. I'm not trying to hound you or make a choice for you, but I just want to give you my two cents. Go to Duke and just play basketball with Cooper, baby. It'll be the easiest transition, and it's the safest. What if I don't want to go to Duke, Ma? Well, go to UConn then. It's all the same. So you still haven't changed. You don't care where I go. You just don't want me to play football. Dante, I let you play football thinking you were never going to get hit because you were playing 7-on-7. Seven seven. Then, I let you play again your senior year when they allowed it for you to build some memories, and you did, son. You did great, but football is dangerous. Especially knowing you're going to try to take your black ass to the SEC or something foolish. So please, baby, just be safe and smart. That's all. I love you. Now, don't get me wrong. I completely understood where my mom was coming from. But little did she know, I had already made my decision. Dante Devon Greer, I'm a whoop, yo! Yes, sir, roll tide. But hey, let me get into why I picked Alabama. They just came off a of Final Four and the roster is deep. I'm not gonna lie, them being so talented at the guard position almost scared me away. But on my visit, coach assured me there'd be a spot for me here and my skill set can really be an asset to this program. Being able to have an all around big like Grant Nelson and being able to play with and learn from some of college basketball's elite guards like Mark Sears and Rylan Griffin and this team has some serious potential to do some damage. Now the football side. At first I was worried Jalen Milrow leading them to the playoffs last season had his spot secured, but then I realized that motherfucker is a running back and can't hold a candle to my throwing ability. The spot will be mine in due time and I'm thinking I can probably be the starter before the regular season even starts. But I came here because Bama will always be one of the most talented rosters in college football. Coming here ensures elite defense and elite O-line play, as well as we're always going to have some of the best skilled players in the nation. What sold me was how able and willing this receiver core is to make a play after the catch and the speed they all possess. And being able to rely on already proven targets like Jermaine Burton and Ja'Cory Brooks has me more than hyped for the football season. I've set the stage and you know why we're here, it's already almost that time to get to my first football game. Basketball season doesn't start until November and we still have about a month until camp so we're going to be focused on the field for a little. I'm outside coach's office right now and he's going to tell me who the starter is headed into week one. I'm not going to lie, Jalen came into camp a better quarterback than last season but I still think I outperformed him. I guess we're about to find out. Hey Dante, thanks so much for coming in. I'm not going to take up too much of your time. But I'm pretty sure you know this is regarding who our number one is this Saturday. Now honestly, we feel you did better during camp and will definitely be the guy going forward. But we can't ignore what Jalen did for us last season and the improvements he's made since he's been here. So here's what I'm going to do. Jalen starts first half, you get the second, and this Saturday, show me you're our guy. Now I can't say I'm 100% with coach's decision, but I can definitely respect it. All I have to do is wait for running back Milrow to mess up and the spot is mine. And if I just play better when it's my turn, the spot is mine. So I'm actually hyped for Saturday's game. Finally in the locker room before my first college game, and this is what we're going with for our home game against the Gators, man. I got the dangling mouthpiece. I got the chrome heart cleats with the chrome heart glove on the non-throwing hand. I am left-handed. Got the little north face and towel, man. Just a little calm drip. And without further ado, man, it's time to finally start writing my story. I was right, man. At starting the second half, we are down 10 points against the Florida Gators, and Jalen Miller only put up 7 points, so this is my time to shine. I start off by hitting Kobe Prentice right there to pick up a first down. And on the drag route, man, coach is just giving the short routes right here, my rhythm going as then we have a screen right here to Jace McClellan he's gonna make a man miss and then juke back to the inside again make a total of like six defenders miss on that one play man to get us right outside the red zone I'm feeling good on my first drive so I'm gonna throw up a bomb and I'm gonna hit Jermaine Burton in stride for my first collegiate touchdown and more importantly we're only down three points against the Florida Gators so hopefully our defense can get us a stop right here and we can go ahead and try to take the lead dropping back on our next drive man and I'm able to hit Jermaine Burton again on the crosser route to get us another first down and move us down the field a little bit more i'm feeling like that's going to be one of my main targets this season we have jacory brooks on the rocket motion he's able to pick up a block and get us yet another first down offense is picking up some momentum and i'm dropping back to throw and i throw an absolute dart right in the hole to our tight end right there to give us another first down and we're going to keep the passing game going the very next play is i'm going to hold it wait for him to beat his man and hit kobe prentice on the corner route he's going to get us inside the 10 yard line and set us up with the first and goal we ended up running the ball didn't go for any yards so here the very next play second and goal i'm going to go ahead and run to the outside and dive into the end zone to give us the lead over florida give me my first rushing touchdown my second touchdown of the game as we take the lead here late in the third quarter not only did i close Jalen milrose gap but i took it and i'm also trying to go ahead and get some more as i hit jermaine burton on the deep post route he beats his man and we go from being down two scores to being up two scores against florida and i'm really proving early on that i'm qb1 as i hit kobe prentice on this wheel route to set us up with yet another first and goal man the offense has just been firing on all cylinders ever since i got subbed in in the very 
next play, we go with the read option. I'm going to flip into the end zone untouched, man. As we take a three-score lead on the floor to Gators, it's safe to say I feel like I'm QB1 headed into next week, and it doesn't stop there. Florida does score, but we go with the little read option. I pick up about 20 yards, slide my way to a first down. First and 10, we go ahead and give it to McClellan. He's able to pick up about a gain of 10 yards on this put-away drive. Only about two minutes left in the game. He falls forward for another gain of nine, then I fall forward for that last yard. Third and nine, we're not going to get the first down, but we completed the mission, got all of their timeouts, and made it a multi-score game game to go ahead and walk out of here with the W. Start the season 1-0, and and it's safe to say that I'll be the starting quarterback moving forward. After the performance I put on today, I threw 10 for 13 with two touchdowns while Jalen Trash rolled through 3 for 6 in an interception, man. So I'm feeling really good headed into this Week 2 game against UNC, one of the schools I was heavily considering going to. So it's really important that we come out here and win this game, so I know that I made the right decision. And we're starting off good by hitting Jermaine Burton and then Ja'Cory Brooks to get us across the 50-yard line. But then I miss a wide open Jermaine Burton on a third and 17 to force us to punt and UNC gets their first seven so now we're playing from behind in the second quarter but I'm gonna make up for it by throwing a bomb to Jermaine Burton and he makes a terrific catch to get us inside the red zone off of one play I'm dropping back to throw on the second down and I actually get sacked man to make it a third and 21 got us in a bit of a hole so I'm looking to throw and I miss yet another throw but it actually turned out to be a holding call so two drives that had potential but ended up stalling out and we're gonna be down 10-0 to UNC in the second quarter with about a minute left so we're trying to make something happen i'm able to hit isaiah bond he makes a man miss and then jukes to the inside and picks up a block and is able to take this all the way to the one yard line and then coach is going to call my number on the qb sneak to go ahead and finish the drive off so headed into halftime we're only down three and we get the ball at half so hopefully this momentum can carry over outside of the locker room and we can take the lead here dropping back on a first and 10 first play of the second half i'm able to hit jermaine burton for the first down second and three a few plays later i'm looking to throw and who is it but jermaine burton i throw it deep to him on the bomb and he's wide open as he skips his way to our first lead of this game but UNC is not going to stay put down for long they're going to take the lead back but next drive third and ten I'm looking to throw and I'm just going to throw up a bomb to Ja'Cory Brooks he's going to beat his man get us to the 25 yard line man knocking on the door to score again a play later second and ten and I'm going to hit Ja'Cory Brooks again he's going to be his man on the post and just like that we're going to go up against UNC yet again in this game but Drake May isn't tapping out UNC went down and scored again so we're back down through with five minutes left in the fourth quarter I'm dropping back to throw trying to get us this lead back and I'm able to hit Ja'Cory Brooks yet again man as he's been cooking in the second half first and 10 I'm looking for a touchdown so I stay patient step up in the pocket and find Jermaine Burton wide open on the crossing route to give us the lead against UNC again but as you guessed Drake May's not laying down as we are down again down three with three minutes left in the fourth quarter hopefully this is the last drive of the game and I'm starting off with a bang by hitting my boy Isaiah Bond to get us right outside the red zone on one play and now that we're guaranteed three we're in two clock mode this is Jace McClellan's second handoff in a row and he's going to pick up about a gain of 12 right there get us a first and 10 basically a first and goal then the next play on second and nine I'm able to hit Ja'Cory Brooks on the zig route he's able to make it a third and two and we need this right here pressure in my face so I'm able to hit our tight end with only 36 seconds left that's going to be the game winning touchdown here in Alabama as we start off the season 2-0 and what better statement to make than out dueling one of next year's top QB draft prospects in Drake May 400 yards and four touchdowns man I was balling last week but we're gonna have to keep it going this week against Tennessee if we're gonna want to go 3-0 on this season. We're going to start off with the bang, hitting our tight end for about a gain of 20. Then the very next play, Isaiah Bond, who's been making plays out of the slot all season long, gets us inside the red zone. But unfortunately, our drive is going to come to an end after three great defensive plays by Tennessee in a row. It seemed like this drive had a lot of potential, but they were able to buckle down and hold us to three right here. Our defense does get a stop, though. So we're going to start the next drive by hitting Jermaine Burton on the slant. He's going to make a man miss with the juke, and no one's going to catch him. He's going to take this all the way to the end zone to give us a 10-point lead here early on in this Tennessee game they do go ahead and strike back though so we're only up three points on this next drive but we're going to open it back up by hitting Ja'Cory Brooks on the streak pattern he's going to toast his man and run into the end zone to put us up by 10 once again in this game and our defense holds Tennessee to three so if we score a touchdown right here we can potentially open up this game in the second quarter and that's what we're going to do right here hitting Isaiah Bond on the receiver wheel and he's going to take it all the way to the house that's what I said when I told you I came to Alabama track stars all over the receiving core man they're just faster than all the DBs around the league defense got another stop and we get the ball to start the half and track stars man we hit Isaiah Bond again on the crosser and look at that three defenders in chase but no one's going to catch him as he gives us a three score lead on Tennessee and it's not going to stop there as our defense got to stop in the red zone so we're just going to go ahead and give it to Jace McClellan and pour on the scoring as we send the lead even further basically putting the game out of reach Tennessee is going to get another touchdown but this is going to go ahead and put the game away I hit Ja'Cory Brooks wide open on the crosser and he's going to take it all the way down to the one yard line and we're going to go ahead and score the next play
play, giving us a 40-point win on the Tennessee Volunteers to go ahead and go 3-0 on the season. And as I throw this last touchdown to Jermaine Burton, I'm hoping that this carries over into next week against Notre Dame. They have one of the best defenses in the nation early on this season, but it doesn't matter. As we're going to pick up right where we left off last game, hitting Ja'Cory Brooks on the post route, and no one's going to catch him as he streaks into the end zone, giving us our first lead against Notre Dame, but they're going to tie up the game, and this drive isn't going to be as easy as on third and 10. We get stopped, and we're forced to punt. They're going to go ahead and score there, too, so we're actually down seven points here, almost halftime. First and 10, I'm dropping back, trying to get us some points, and I throw a terrible pass. It's going to turn into a pick six, and we're going to go into the half down 14 points against this Notre Dame team. We do get the ball to start the next half, so we're going to have to go ahead and pick it up if we don't want to lose this game. I'm able to hit the tight end right here for a big gain, but it's going to actually turn into nothing as I miss Isaiah Bond wide open on the slant, and then third and 10, I miss yet another target. It was in his hands, but he dropped it. It was still a little bit far in front of him. Thankfully, our defense is able to get us a stop, so we need to go ahead and score here. I'm able to hit Isaiah Bond, get us across the 40-yard line right there. I'm dropping back again to throw, and I'm able to throw up the lob to Jermaine Burton, the patent and over the shoulder lob as Jermaine beats his man, and we're only down seven points. Our defense is able to get us another stop as well, so this is the drive that we can potentially tie the game up here, dropping back to throw on this second and 16. Don't see anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it myself, use my legs to pick up as many yards as possible to make it a third and short, where we just gave it to Jace to pick up the first down, but he's going to get a lot more here as he breaks the tackle and falls forward past the 30-yard line, dropping back on a second down a few plays later, looking to throw, and I throw an absolute bomb across the field to Isaiah Bond as he falls into the end zone and ties up this game against Notre Dame. Hopefully our defense can get a stop so we can potentially take the lead here, which they end up doing, but Notre Dame's defense isn't giving up either as on this third and six, I'm actually going to get sacked and we're forced to punt them the ball back with three minutes left in this fourth quarter, but our defense gets another stop and we're in overtime. Notre Dame actually already got the ball as well, so if we can go down and score, this is going to be my second game winning drive in a row and we can improve to 4-0 and as we're just giving it to McClellan. He gets us two first downs in a row, then the next play on second and seven, we get it to Lewis to pick up yet another first down, put it together a good methodical drive, but I want to go ahead and put the game to bed, and I'm going to do just that, hitting Ja'Cory Brooks on the crosser, he beats his man in the man-to-man -man coverage, and we're going to go ahead and improve to 4-0 on the season, two game-winning drives in a row, one versus one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, this one versus one of the best defenses in the nation, and I'm on fire as we head into week five against Clemson, we're going to be able to carry that momentum over into this first drive, as on the play action, I'm able to hit our tight end right here for a first down, and then the very next play, I'm able to hit it up with hitting my boy Isaiah Bond on the corner route. He's able to beat his man, Nate Wiggins, and he's going to take this all the way to the crib to go ahead and start the Clemson game off with a bang. Something tells me this is going to be a shootout as Clemson scored pretty fast, and we get the ball back right here, and I'm dropping back. I'm going to get yet another big play to Jermaine Burton. He's going to beat his man on the crossing route to get us right outside the 30-yard line. On this third and 10, I'm dropping back, trying to capitalize off of the big play, and who else but Jermaine Burton yet again on the crossing pattern, beat the linebacker to get us a seven-point lead, but Clemson, of course, is going to tie it up. So with two minutes left until the half, we're trying to get some points to take the lead headed into the halftime we're able to hit Jermaine Borden for a first down I'm dropping back to throw yet again I throw up this lob to Isaiah Bond and he's unable to hold on to the ball through the contact but it's okay as the next play I'm able to hit our tight end right here on the in route to convert on the third down second down I'm gonna go ahead and scramble and pick up yet another first down first and goal knock on the door to get the lead before halftime and I throw a bad interception my tight end is supposed to run up toward the ball but he didn't the defender did instead and that's gonna turn into a pick just an ill-advised throw that could have easily led to seven then right here I'm going to overthrow the receiver on another third down and Clemson is going to take the lead so that's two drives man potentially a 14 point swing where we could have been up and I'm going to throw yet another interception man and just piling on the mistakes I'm throwing interceptions I'm missing throws and Clemson's going to score yet another touchdown so at the start of this fourth quarter we are down 14 points and I finally decided to put my head in the game man hitting Jermaine Burton on the crossing pattern he's going to take it all the way to the crib so just like that in one play we are only down seven but of course Clemson is just going to keep scoring 35 points is up absurd but I'm gonna go ahead and try to hit Ja'Cory Brooks he was wide open and I missed the throw that could have potentially helped us win this game as we would have scored in one play right there but now we got to grind our way down the field man hopefully we can get out of bounds as many times as possible I'm able to hit Isaiah Bond and he's able to do just that crossing the field and sprinting out of bounds to keep as much time on the clock as possible next play I'm dropping back again I'm able to follow that up by hitting Ja'Cory Brooks for another first down and in this play we find Isaiah Bond wide open streaking across the seam for yet another touchdown to put us down by seven again but Clemson is going to score another touchdown 42 points man and I'm going to overthrow another one play and that's going to be basically it for this game we just don't have enough time to come back from two scores I'm not going to give up those I'm hitting Ja'Cory Brooks and he's going to take it all the way to the crib and I just woke up too late man throwing those two interceptions and throwing those drives away with the missed throws we could have easily won this game if I was focused
focused the whole time and it looks like me and coach were on the same page. Now Dante, you've been doing a great job so far leading this team, but I'd be a fool to not understand that your lapses in judgment recently is because basketball season is about to start. Now my job is for this football team to win games, so as much as I understand how much is on your plate right now, I just can't sympathize with the decision you chose to make. If you want to continue to start for this football team, make sure you're focused. That's all. Coach was right. It's about midway through the football season, which means our first basketball game is this week. Not only have I been anxious and nervous about the new season, but I've also just been exhausted from practicing, working out, and watching film with two D1 sports teams. I gotta admit, it's a little harder than I thought, but don't think we're finna give up. It's funny that we just met with our football head coach, but now it's time to meet with our basketball coach. It's the last practice before our first game, and I'm assuming he wants to talk about my role on the squad. So me and coach talked and I'm going to be coming off the bench as a six man but we'll still get some time with the first group. This is what I was honestly expecting as we have two guards that just led this team to a final four. Coach was basically saying he'd use the first half of the season to experiment with different lineups but odds are if I wanted to start me or Rylan Griffin would have to transition to the small forward position. To me that was no big deal. Scrimmaging these dudes has me excited as hell to play with them no matter what role coach decides for me. We have a three game opening week stretch before I have to put the pads on again, so let's see if I still got it on the court too. Subbed in with about one minute left in the first quarter and I try to go to my spot on the mid range but it's off. I make up for it on defense though by getting this block right here and I keep trying to find my first bucket but it's just not going man. I miss again. That was my coveted shot in high school man. Hit him from the post and then my matchup is going to come right back down and smack a three toward the end of the first quarter. I'm still trying to get my first bucket i drive past i do a spin move and i get my stuff blocked man so starting out my college career 0 for 3 not good so far but at least the game is tied i'm finally able to get my first points right here got so excited that i passed the ball but i was able to get my first dunk my first two points as we take a two-point lead against arizona then we're able to hit rylan griffin right here for three to give us that five-point lead back here on offense i'm in the pick and roll game right here with my big and i'm able to dunk the ball go ahead and extend the lead to five and i think i'm finally getting my groove man finally Finally finding some momentum here we get the and one layup to extend the lead even further against the wildcats and then we're going to go back to the pick and roll grant nelson with me setting the screen and i'm going to hit the euro step and i'm going to dump it out to him and he's going to hit the three to give us a 10 point lead in this game as we're just firing on all cylinders at this point finally able to hit my post shot right there that's how you know we're cooking when i'm finally able to hit the post we do get stolen from right here but grant nelson is able to recover and hit the bucket to go ahead and give us a seven point lead headed into the half we sub back in in the third quarter with about two minutes left actually down by five man we lost the lead but i'm here to get it back we dunk it right there then we hit mark sears in the corner he's unable to hit that three and then arizona comes back and hits a three of their own so we're down here in the third quarter with about a minute left i'm going with the iso i cross left cross back right and i'm able to dunk the ball on their big but they're not going away as their guard hits the step back mid-range right here to extend their lead to eight points but i'm back in the post finally feeling the hot hand so i'm gonna take this step back hop shot hit it in the guard's face they're gonna get two back but then i come off the screen from the big hit the corner three and i'm just slowly chipping away at this lead trying to get us our first win on the season i hit grant nelson on the roll he big bodies the little guard to go ahead and get a layup and with four minutes left we're only down by three points trying to keep this momentum going i get the rebound i'm looking up trying to get the break going but i don't see anything so i'm gonna go ahead and do it behind the back myself and then turn that into a euro step and finish over their center to only put us down by one point in this fourth quarter we're back on defense and they hit me with the screen and give me on the big and I fall asleep on the backdoor cut to increase their lead back to three points. That was the bad defensive lapse, but I'm trying to get back here on the offensive end, calling for the screen from Grant and then hitting the fall away mid range. We're, we're down five points with a minute 40 left. I call for the pick and fade from Rylan Griffin, trying to get someone to help, which they do. They leave Mark Sears, our sharpshooter, wide open in the corner for three. We're only down two points here, and I get the block right here. Nelson gets the board, and we throw it down to Rylan Griffin for yet another three to give us our first lead of the fourth quarter, and we're now up one point with 48 seconds left having all the momentum headed into this timeout we get another stop right here trying to put this game away i'm coming down with the ball and i find rylan griffin for another three and mark sears and rylan griffin just put this game to bed as we're gonna go ahead and beat arizona to start one and zero on the season as i secure player of the game my first collegiate game 22 7 and 4 and as we sub in midway through this iowa state game i'm trying to keep that going as i hit this mid-range to start us off we're already up in this game and iowa state is not the best team so hopefully 
hopefully we can just come in here and dominate as i get my first assist to parker in the corner for three i got the one-on-one -on -one over here on the right wing i'm sizing him up and i bring it around and i find grant nelson as they try to help with the big here i'm grabbing the rebound and i'm gonna go coast to coast right here just show you my athleticism i hit the behind the back go around the center and dunk this ball right here to give us the 10 point lead on the cyclones then me and mark sears run the pick and fade and he gets wide open and further increases our lead by smacking that three me and ryan nelson now on the screen as it seems like the screens the pick and roll game the pick and fade game is just the bread and butter of our team so far here we run the perfect give and go to get a dunk and extend this lead even further then here i fake the post shot and throw it out to mark sears for yet another three and that was the theme of this game as we just ran away with it we absolutely dominated the cyclones and it was because our three-point shooting was so good as you see run the pick and fade again here with mark sears for another three here catch ryan nelson's man trying to double team me he gets him a three right there almost up 20 points against the cyclones right now there's just nothing that they can do to stop us as i throw it out to rylan griffin and he's going to get us another three in this third quarter and the last play before i get subbed out i'm going to hit a three of my own to go ahead and join the party we wouldn't get subbed back in until a minute left in the fourth but as you see we we're already up 20 so after this dunk that's going to go ahead and end this game we absolutely dominated iowa to go 2-0 on this basketball season and i'm going to secure myself another player of the game going 27 7 and 7 only missing two shots and it looks like we're going to need that offense again this game as we sub into the last game of the episode down four against ucla we're gonna get our first points on this fast break dunk right here to narrow the lead down to two points but i can tell this ucla team came into play as their guard smacks an and one three right here to go ahead and extend their lead back to four and we're gonna have our work cut out for us if we want to win this game i'm gonna try to run the break here but they're actually gonna get themselves another layup to extend the lead even further and then they get the ball again trying to get us a stop right here they're gonna run a set play off the inbound and get another three so just like that we are down 10 points in this first quarter and we're going to start cutting into that lead as mark sears gives us a three right there to do just that we're finally getting some stops on defense we're looking to score once again i'm able to hit the big man underneath he's able to get the dunk right there and i'm able to get this block he's able to get the rebound and then go ahead and get himself another dunk and just like that we're down three points we're on a little bit of a run right here hopefully we can keep the defense going but their big is going to smack a three in our face and they're just shooting all over the place right now they're looking like how we've been looking so far early on this season we have to put a stop to their run and off the pick and roll i'm able to hit this layup on their big man i have their guard out in the iso he's undersized he can't guard me on the inside so i hit him with the euro and get us a layup to only put us down four points and then i continue to take advantage of the mismatch getting a post fade right there on the guard and then i go ahead with the spin layup right here just absolutely dominating around the rim right now and then i'm able to hit our big man right there to put us down four points here in this third quarter we're down nine we're desperately trying to come back we don't want to get a loss early on this season as i dunk the ball right there off this system mark sears run the pick and fade with rylan griffin and you guys know what that is green boys we're only down four points trying to get a stop here on defense i make the guard take a terrible shot with the shot clock running down and that's going to be a fast break right here i'm out on here i'm bobbling the ball a little bit but i'm able to finish with my right hand to put us down by two points we have three minutes left i fade to the right to go ahead and tie up this game at 57 then i get the ball off the catch and shoot off the dribble to give us our first lead of this game to go up by three but they're gonna throw this full court pass man we were caught celebrating and we're only up by one point right here but i'm gonna go ahead and get the dunk off the pick and roll up by three points we need this last stop but we're not gonna get it as the ucla guard's gonna make a tough fadeaway jumper i'm here isoing on the wing trying to go ahead and put this game away and rylan griffin is gonna do just that draining this three to put us up by four and then after this they're gonna try to double team me off the isolation but we catch a man off the roll and they're just gonna be doing a lot of fouling and time out and but we're gonna start this season three and oh and with me here football and basketball it's a great time to be an alabama fan oh man have you ever been so tired you just don't want to move like your whole body hurts and you just want to stay in bed forever that's how i've been feeling lately man let me get up real quick but yeah i'm not gonna lie to y'all boys ever since basketball started up i've been dead having to practice and work out with the football and basketball team has me low-key second guessing this decision not even getting into how much time it consumes just the wear and tear i feel in my body is enough of a pain but with me being so tired and barely having free time the truth is my grades have been slipping and by slipping i mean i'm failing a class both my coaches were real upset and ran me to death for it but let's just say it uh it got taken care of. Oh, how you doing, Mr. Thompson? I was just here to talk about Daryl. We got a game tomorrow and says he's filling his class or, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, we had midterms recently and he got a 67 on his side. Oh, 67, so, okay. Yeah. You need what, 70 to pass? Yeah, right? 70. Oh, a 70, okay. That's, that's three points, right? Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, just fill that in for me, you know what I'm saying? Just need no school. Well, I'm telling you right now, just pass them through. It's three points. 
Just three points, just pass them through. Sorry, coach. Pass them through. All right, coach. I'm I gonna ain't gonna say it again. Pass them through. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna need you to leave, coach. I'm sorry. Yeah, but anyway, so last episode, you saw me start my collegiate career for the most part on a positive note. We're halfway through the football season, sitting at 5-1 and one as one of the best teams in the nation. It's obvious I'm a midseason Heisman favorite, and a lot of that credit goes to my boys Ja'Cory Brooks and Jermaine Burton, as they themselves are in a class of their own this year among the best receivers in the league. Now I'd be lying if I said being the star quarterback on one of the nation's best football teams didn't come with his advantages off the field as well. For starters, my NIL evaluation as a two-sport athlete is around $3 million right now. Touching this type of money as a freshman in college was not something I was expecting, but took with open arms most definitely. Of course, I had to splurge a little bit, buying myself a new whip and getting my mom's a new spot in a nicer neighborhood. She was still mad that I decided to play football, but after she saw her new pad, she was all smiles. It's time to get back to business though, as the last six games of this season are going to be tough. We have an easy matchup next week against the 2-4 NC State, but after that, it's going to be a battle. We have Oklahoma, then a and followed by Georgia, Ole Miss, and LSU. Making sure our guys are extra locked in this practice, as yeah, we started good, but this season can easily go bad on this final stretch and we need all hands on deck to finish our season out on the right foot. We got the second half of the season against NC State and as you can tell by this first play they really just didn't have enough for us man. We dominated this whole game and the theme was big plays and one play scores. We started here with Ja'Cory Brooks in the very next drive. We're going to open it up again by hitting Jermaine Burton on the deep post route. He's going to catch it in stride and take it all the way to the end zone to get us a 14 point lead on the Wolf Pack right here man and then we're going to get the ball again and back in the pocket and who else but Ja'Cory Brooks cooks his man in the one-on-one -on -one Coverage and he's going to get us yet another touchdown as we go up 21 10 against NC State, headed into the half. And then we're going to get the ball here in the red zone. I'm able to hit Jermaine Burton on the drag route. He's going to get us all the way down to the three yard line to set us up with another first and goal. And I'm going to hit him again on the hitch route. He's going to get slammed, but slammed into the end zone to extend our lead on this game. And then I'm dropping back on a first and 10 the next drive. And I'm able to hit Jace McClellan on the angle route. He beats his man and makes a man miss to get us in the red zone again. Then I hit Jermaine Burton on the drag route, and he's going to get us yet another touchdown touchdown further extending our lead and NC State would score some points but they just couldn't keep up with our high powered offenses I'm dropping back again on this first and 10 and I'm able to hit Ja'Cory Brooks deep on the crosser right outside the red zone once again in the very next play I'm going to get us there officially by hitting our tight end and he's going to get us all the way down inside the 10 yard line for yet another first and goal and then on second and goal I don't see anything I like so I'm just going to take it in myself and get us yet another touchdown on the game as we just completely ran away with it and NC State would score another touchdown but then we're going to get another one of our own on the play action, Ja'Cory Brooks absolutely fries his man on the crossing route, and he's able to juke inside and fall into the end zone as we drop 50 points on the Wolf Pack. But now on the basketball side of things, it's still really early on as we're 3-0 on a 30-game season. We have a few games before we go back onto the field, and they are already some of the biggest of the season. We have Purdue next, followed up by U of H, which are two of some of the best teams in the nation. Coach pulled me in his office after practice to stress the importance of these next two games. Dante, thanks for coming by. I just wanted to let you know you've been coming into your role faster than we expected and are a big part of this team already. Being yourself player of the game off the bench all three games shows me you don't mind coming off the bench if it means it's our best shot at winning and I admire your willingness to get better and learn from the older guys. As you know, we have Purdue and U of H these next few days and I'm going to use these two games to see what you're really about. You'll still be coming off the bench with us experimenting with you, Ryland, and Mark as usual, but I'm going to get you out there more with the first group, figure out how we can best optimize our minutes as we get deeper into the season. That's all I've got. Good work and don't get complacent. Checking the game one against Purdue down two points with about two minutes left in the first quarter and I'm going to fade off the screen and go ahead and tie up the game right there to go ahead and make it 13 apiece. I'm trying to score as many points as possible to show coach that I can be an asset to this team, especially against some of the best teams in the nation. After that Euro sub layup, me and Mark Sears are going to run the pick and fade to perfection. He's going to get himself a wide open three to go ahead and put us up by five points. And then when we check back in in the second quarter, up by one point, we're going to hit Ryland Griffin off of the Euro step to go ahead and put us up by four against Purdue. Back and forth game, the teams just keep taking turns scoring as we're only up one point with a minute left in the second quarter, and I'm going to fade off the screen to go ahead and extend that lead to three, but of course Purdue was going to score again. It's just a back and forth game, just trying to score as many points as possible as we hit Grant Nelson on that nice bounce pass off the pick and roll, and we finish the half off with this zero step layup. Coach had us subbed out for the first part of the second half, but here up by four points, I'm going to call the ISO on this undersized guard, hit him with the jab step into the euro to put us up by six points. Then I follow that up by doing the fake euro and hitting my boy Mohamed 
Muhammad wide open on the wing for a three-pointer. He's going to bang it out and get the green. And then we're going to get a stop right here. I'm going to catch the ball and wait for my man to cut. And I'm going to hit Muhammad again for the lob to go ahead and put us up by 10 points. Coach would sub us out for the rest of the fourth quarter. But now after we put up an impressive 15-7 and seven against the team that made the national championship last year. And this win is going to propel us into this game against U of H. Another one of the best teams in college basketball. And we're going to start the game off right by getting us a dunk right there. And then hitting Mark Sears for this three to get us our first assist in the second quarter by nine points right here we're gonna go the pick and roll and i'm gonna throw up a lob off the backboard to our big man to go ahead and put us up by double digits now i'm gonna hit this off dribble three to further extend our lead against u of h we kind of just ran away with this game man you see i come off the screen throw up another lob to the big man u of h's defense was just kind of lackluster this game we fought back for a little bit but as we got into the fourth quarter the lead just kind of got bigger and bigger as you see just offensive highlights after highlights we hit the tween off the pick and roll and get ourselves another easy dunk man they're just letting the pick and roll go so easily and then we get another wide open three to Ryland to go ahead and extend the lead even further then I'm in the isolation I hit the behind the back into the euro step have the defender lost in the paint got him on the other side then we go with the pick and fade with Mark Sears and I just go ahead and pull up myself to get myself another two points get my defender jumping on the fade and do a perfect give and go with Parker to give me another easy dunk man as their paint defense has been sweet all game long and I'm gonna show that right here man dunking over three defenders to go ahead and put an exclamation point on this game we're able to beat U of H by almost 20 points man we beat them by 17 as I put up 26 4 and 5 off the bench to give us two wins in a row over some of the best teams in the nation as you boys saw we were able to take care of business and beat two of college basketball's best teams from last season coach has been impressed with my play especially watching how I've gotten comfortable in the offense and I've started to get my teammates involved with more assists so much so that for the next two games he's gonna try a lineup where I'm starting point guard and he moves Mark to the two and Ryland to the three I can't say I'm not excited for these next two games but I have to make sure I perform so I can stay in the starting rotation this game starting against Indiana and I feel good as I've been hooping all season off the bench so me being plugged into the starting lineup shouldn't change anything and I get to play with Rylan and Mark Moore. We're going to get this right here as Rylan gets us an assist to get the first bucket of the game. Indiana will match it with a bucket of their own but we're going to get a defensive stop here with the outlet pass and we're going to get ourselves a fast break dunk to go ahead and get us four points. Next possession we're in the ISO. I'm sizing up my defender trying to find some space man and eventually I'm going to get it as I go right and then spin left and get myself a wide open layup and then we're going to go ahead and go with the floppy play right here to to get Rylan Griffin wide open off of the screen and get us a seven point lead after I tried to set the screen for Mark Sears but he wanted the big instead so I just moved out the way and he actually just stepped back and pulled up a three to further extend this lead and we're going to find out soon enough that Indiana just doesn't have enough for us I'm gonna go ahead and get the and one euro step right there feeling all the momentum Mark Sears is going to pull up a little fuck you three with a second left in the first quarter and he's going to smack it here I'm wide open in transition I'm gonna get myself a three of my own and don't forget man I can still play defense I'm picking him up from full court right here eventually I'm going to get the bump steal as he tries to do a behind the back into me i'm gonna get this ball size him up and then go ahead and go with the euro step right past him in the next offensive possession down we're gonna go ahead and run floppy for mark sears and of course he's gonna hit the three as we can just do no wrong so far in this game here in the third quarter i'm sizing up my matchup i hit him with the tween tween euro get us another easy bucket right there as we're trying to extend our lead to 20 points and rylan griffin is gonna get us one step closer to that by hitting this wide open three right here then we're gonna get a defensive stop he's gonna hit me on the outlet and i'm gonna go ahead and dunk the ball right there just absolutely running away with this game indiana has no answers for our offensive firepower as i hit a spin dunk right there and then we're gonna go ahead and throw the contact lob to ryan nelson then i'm gonna get this off ball screen and smack me another three wide open in the corner officially making it garbage time as we're up about 20 points with a minute 40 left i'm gonna go ahead and put on the behind the back into the dunk to give me a few more highlights then i'm ice swing with about 50 seconds left hit him with the left to right dunk again as no one can guard me in the one-on-one -on -one. and we get ourselves another win and my first star ends with me going for 29 six and four as we beat indiana moving on to our next game my next start comes against the virginia cavaliers and they came out shooting man the guard came off the screen and pulled up the fadeaway through with confidence when we get the ball back on offense riley griffin's gonna do the same exact thing pulling up right after the pass to go ahead and tie up this game and then i'm gonna go ahead and hit a transition three of my own it looks like it's gonna be a shootout early on i get the euro step layup to further extend our lead here then off the double screen i get wide open in the corner and hit yet another three after a few quick buckets we're gonna go with the pick and roll and i'm gonna go ahead and get the lob off to my center as he finishes around the win with the layup then we go with another pick and roll and i fade they're gonna sub me out and we're gonna come back actually down by two points then i get hit with the screen off the inbound and they hit a three to go ahead and make that five they've been hooping the whole time i was on the bench and it looks like that momentum is still here so i'm gonna have to try and cut into this lead the best i can i'm gonna start by isolating the guard and getting us a layup but they're gonna go ahead and keep scoring back and forth 100 smothered layup is gonna go but we're gonna go ahead and respond by hitting mark sears for this three to only put us down two points but they're gonna go ahead and hit another three of their own to put us back down five as they just keep scoring every time we score get 
this layup to Ryan Nelson off the pick and roll, and we finally get ourselves a stop. We're on the fast break, and we catch our opponents lacking, and I go ahead and get the layup to make this lead one, but Virginia refuses to give up the lead as they're going to hit another three right here going into the half, and starting the third quarter, we're down four points. Make that two as I hit this reverse layup on the big, and I'm going to hit this fadeaway off the screen to go ahead and tie up the game. Then I follow that up by coming off the screen, faking, getting my defender in the air, and then pulling up again for another fadeaway. Toward the end of the third quarter, me and Virginia are just going bucket for bucket right now as I try to keep our team in the game, and I'm going to go ahead and get my 10th straight point off the Euro step, but they're going to go ahead and get another three right here off the off ball screen to go ahead and take the lead back. Then they're going to go ahead and get a steal, and they're going to go coast to coast with this layup right here to put us down five. Heading into the fourth quarter, me and Mark Sears run the pick and roll. I'm going to cut to the basket and finish this dunk off. So back on defense, I lose focus as I come and try to help to get the block, and they're going to kick it out to my man in the corner as he hits the wide open three. This is the worst game to have lapses like that as the Cavaliers just do not seem to want to miss. Then they're going to sub me in two minutes into the fourth quarter, and we are down 13 points. I don't know how the lead got that big in two minutes, but with two minutes and 40 seconds left, I'm doing the best I can to try to keep our team in the game. I hit this layup right here and the next possession down on the fast break. I bully the small guard into an and one layup, but I actually missed the free throw. So we're still going to be down by seven right here after this bucket, but we do get another stop and off the pick and roll. I'm able to find Mark Sears on the cut for a layup. Only put us down five and we have a chance to win this game, but this guard is going to make a crazy layup over our big 80% contested and he's going to get that to go. So we desperately need a bucket right Right here i'm gonna go ahead and deliver by hitting the fadeaway mid-range but we just can't buy a stop as they're gonna miss this right here but get the rebound and as you see only 20 seconds left we have to foul down by five points and that's gonna be my last foul of the game so we're actually gonna take our first loss of the season against virginia and we have to address the point score when i'm not on the floor because we should not be losing games when i score 32. i was hoping we would be able to go 2-0 as a starter but to be fair i have played pretty good now it's time to shift back to football and our head coach wants to talk to us before we head into this home stretch. Dante, I just wanted to congratulate you on making the basketball team starting lineup and on your success so far this season. But I just called you in to remind you that you're the most important piece on this football team. And as we head into the tough part of our schedule in the playoffs, I'm going to need all your focus as we make this national championship run. We ain't playing no more NC States, man. So just be ready. And again, good job. The Oklahoma is our first game. And as you see, coach was right to tell us to lock in as I throw an interception the very first play of this game. And not only that, but they're actually going to capitalize on it, getting seven points. Now we're fighting from behind in this game. And I'm able to hit Ja'Cory Brooks as we try to fight to tie up this ball game. Here on third and 10, we need this to keep the drive alive. And I'm I'm able to find the tight end on a drag route and he's able to break a tackle and get us about 15 yards then i'm able to follow that up by hitting jermaine burden on the post route to go ahead and tie up this game but oklahoma will go ahead and score again so we're fighting from behind with about three minutes left in the third quarter i'm able to hit jacory brooks on the drag route he's able to get us a big gain of about 17 yards right there to move the chains we got sacks on a second and 15 i'm able to find jermaine burden on the post route he absolutely fries his man and he's gonna make a man miss and take it all the way to the crib to go ahead and tie up this game right before half we're in a dog fight right now with Oklahoma. A minute and 30 left. Our defense got to stop. So we're looking to score before halftime and take our first lead of this game. I'm able to find Isaiah Bond on the in route to pick up about another gain of 15 yards. Then I'm dropping back again on this first down and Ja'Cory Brooks absolutely fries the cornerback to go ahead and get us a seven point lead headed into the half and we get the ball to start the half. So hopefully we can go ahead and go up by two scores and put this game away virtually. Second and one I'm looking to throw and I'm able to find my boy Jermaine Burton on the crossing route to get us in the red zone again. Coach calls another pass play and Jermaine Burns actually going to cook his man but I'm going to overthrow this crosser right here could have been a touchdown and put us up by 14 but instead back to the drawing board and on second and 10 I'm going to fire this ball right into the pocket but Jermaine Burns is going to drop it that was a tough catch to have to make so here on third down we're trying to get the touchdown I find Isaiah Bond on the jet chip wasp and then he drops the ball man so an overthrow and then two back-to-back -back drops only lets us go up by 10 and then Oklahoma goes down and gets seven but with only a minute left in the third quarter we're only up by three points and they're going to stop us on this third down forcing us to punt the ball back but we get a stop of our own so we have another chance to go by double digits and i'm gonna hit isaiah bond on the crossing route to get us across the 50 yard line a little bit past the 40 second and one we're looking for another throw and i find jermaine burton on the corner route in the man-to-man -man coverage and he's able to beat his man to go ahead and put us up by the 10 points we were looking for which would ultimately be enough to beat oklahoma as we move to seven and one on the season going into our next matchup against a and and to be honest besides this one interception that i threw right here i don't know what it is why i keep throwing interceptions at the beginning of games but like i was saying besides this interception right here this will basically be like the nc state game AM is new to the sec man they just don't have enough for us right now you're gonna see this game was full of big plays as i just used this game to 
take advantage of the matchups we had over the inferior competition here i'm gonna slide for this first down and i'm gonna follow it up by dropping back in the pocket and finding jermaine burton on the crossing pattern to go ahead and get us our first seven of this game like i said big plays all around jermaine burton has been hooping all season long currently the number one receiver in college football we're gonna go ahead and get him another completion right here as our defense got us a good stop inside the red zone on first and goal i'm gonna go ahead and get us another touchdown hitting isaiah bond on the slant pattern give us 14 points on this game and then we're gonna go ahead and get another big play to isaiah bond on the crossing pattern and he's gonna take this all the way to the crib as no one on AM secondary is gonna be able to catch him as we extend our lead and continue to show how superior we are and it's gonna continue here as i show elite pocket sitting in the pocket waiting for somebody to get open and i'm able to hit jacory brooks late right here as he crosses my face and he's gonna catch the ball and juke to the outside and get us back to another first and goal where i spot the man coverage and wait for my tight end to break and hit him on the out route to give us a three score lead going into the half then on the other side of the half i'm able to hit jermaine burden on this corner route to just further extend the lead and then we're going to get another big play right here hitting isaiah bond on the crossing pattern like i said man a and m's corners just cannot keep up with our track team of a receiver court as i'm gonna hit isaiah bond again wide open on the cross here to set us up with another trip to the red zone and no one's going to be open on this first and ten so i'm just going to go ahead and pick up the first down myself use my legs to get us a first and goal from the six and then here two plays later on a third and goal finally able to find isaiah bond to get us another touchdown and our defense got another great stop and jacory brooks is going to go ahead and take this dig route to the crib to give us another 50 point game on the season and another w as we head into this game against georgia man one of the best teams in the nation one of the best defenses in the nation we're going to have to be all hands on deck for this game as this is going to be nothing like a and m this is going to be one of our toughest challenges of the season as we do strike quickly here but we get a three and out and georgia scores twice so now we're down even though we struck first in the second quarter jermaine burton is going to give us a big play right here making a man miss and breaking a tackle getting us to the 30 yard line first and 10 i'm looking for a man open and i don't see anything so i'm just gonna pick up as many yards as possible making it a second and three and then we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a touchdown right here hitting jermaine burton on the post route which gave us the lead but georgia took it right back so here down three again with two minutes left until the half and that was literally a drag route and my receiver stopped rewind it if you want but that was not my fault i don't know what jacory brooks was doing it was a drag so i threw it thinking he would go past the linebacker and it turned into a pick six and just like that we're down 10 and then on this third and 10 we're gonna get stopped again which is gonna force a punt but our defense is gonna get us a stop so with a minute left in the second quarter we're down 10 points and i'm able to hit our tight end right here to get us inside the red zone we're desperately trying to cut into this lead headed into the half and i'm gonna hit jacory brooks as he's gonna make up for that bad ran route to go ahead and put us down by three points headed into the half and with us getting the ball this is our chance to take the lead back and we're gonna start off with the bang hitting jacory brooks again on this fade route he's gonna hold on to the ball through the tough hit and the next play later second and 10 jacory brooks is gonna fry his man again on the fade route giving us the lead back over georgia and with our defense getting a stop this play to jermaine burton could set us up with a potentially going up by two possessions we're getting across the 50 after that big play and then i'm dropping back to throw but i throw a pick this time it was my fault man i thought jacory brooks would be able to beat his man and he wasn't predetermined to throw and turned into an interception and georgia goes and scores so we're gonna need to make up for it and i do just that i think jacory brooks for his third touchdown of this game they just can't keep up with his speed as we get another touchdown to take the lead back in the shootout against the bulldogs shootout indeed as georgia's gonna score again so we're down three points and on this third and eight i'm able to hit isaiah bond as he beats his man on the zig to keep the drive alive in this clutch drive four minutes left in the fourth quarter so we're gonna try to choose some clock on this potential game winning drive man we're gonna go ahead and give it to jason mcclellan two plays in a row as he's gonna go ahead and get us our first down then i'm dropping back on a first and ten we were trying to choose some clock but i find jermaine burton wide open and this is actually going to turn into the game winning touchdown as our defense holds out for the last three minutes of this game this is a monumental win as us and georgia were the top two teams in the sec and us beating them gives us great confidence and standing as we head into the last two games of the season we can't get too excited as Ole miss is still one of the best teams in the sec as well currently ranked third and of course we're going to start this game off with the interception this is that three games in a row now we start off with the pick it hasn't come to our detriment yet so hopefully we can continue that trend as we hit jermaine burton right here to get on the right side of the momentum and then we're going to follow that up by hitting our tight end for yet another first down and back to throw again at the end of the first quarter and i'm able to find jermaine burton on the crosser he's going to make a tough catch to get us inside the red zone for the first time this game and then i'm gonna throw a perfect lob pass to my tight end but he's gonna drop it man as that could have been our potential first score but i'm gonna make up for it by hitting jermaine burton on this corner route as he makes yet another tough catch to set us up with the first and goal and a few plays later we just give it to jace mcclellan and he walks into the end zone untouched but old miss does match so we're down three points with five minutes left until the half we're able to hit jermaine burton for that big play and then the very next play we're able to hit jacory brooks to get us yet another first down and keep driving down the field as we try to take this lead as i'm finally able to hit jacory brooks on the drag route he beats his man late and he's gonna be able
able to turn up the field to set us up with the first and 10 from the 10. So basically first and goal. And then one play later, I'm just going to go ahead and run it into the end zone to go ahead and take the lead against Ole Miss and the Rebels. They went down and got three and gave us the ball with a minute left until half. And I'm going to throw it up to Ja'Cory Brooks. And he's going to catch the ball and beat his man and take it all the way into the end zone, giving us a much needed touchdown before half to give us the momentum headed into halftime. Ole Miss is actually going to go ahead and score again, but we're going to score again too. Hitting Isaiah Bond on the crossing pattern. And he's going to get us a first and goal with two minutes left in the third quarter dropping back trying to get us another touchdown and i throw a bad pick man thinking that we were going to score a touchdown i think that can fit it into jermaine burton and i do just the opposite old miss takes the lead there so after throwing that interception we're down by one point in this fourth quarter and we need to put it together if we're going to want to go ahead and win this game i'm scrambling and i'm able to find jermaine burton on the crossing pattern to get us outside the 30 yard line then this first and 10 i'm looking for somebody and i'm gonna try to force up this post jacory brooks is going to come back and make the catch and outrun the defenders to get us yet another first and goal with six minutes left in the game. Corey Brooks seems to always show up when we need a big play. And speaking of showing up when we need a big play, Jermaine Burton is going to get us a go-ahead touchdown right here against Ole Miss. But they're actually going to score and get us into overtime. But our defense got to stop. So if we can score here, we can put this game on ice. And who else but Jermaine Burton to go ahead and do exactly that as we go ahead and best Ole Miss in overtime. Three game-winning drives in a row. I have that clutch gene as we head into our final game of this season versus the LSU Tigers. Another elite SEC team fighting for a play playoff spot as they only have two losses on the season so if they beat us a team with only one loss and currently ranked number one in the nation they can definitely go ahead and sneak into the playoffs so this is a must win game for both teams right here as winning this game will assure us the number one seed so i know that both teams are going to play hard but we can't be dropping passes in games of this magnitude man and then to top it off on second and ten i actually end up throwing my patented first drive interception giving lsu the ball back when we could have at least tied the game but potentially taken the lead our defense is going to bail us out getting us another stop so we're going to start off with the little touch pass to Jermaine Byrne. He's going to pick up a block from Ja'Cory and get about a gain of 20 yards right here. Even though he got scoop slammed by the defender, it doesn't matter because we're moving swift down the field. Able to hit Jermaine Burton again on the crossing pattern to set us up with the first and 10 from the 10. And then I'm able to hit Ja'Cory Brooks on the hitch route to go ahead and give us a lead over LSU. And our defense got us another stop. So with about a minute left until halftime, we can potentially take an even bigger lead and get the ball. And we're going to do just that. As I find Kobe Prentice open on the crossing pattern, he's able to beat his man and get tackled into the end zone to go ahead and extend our lead to about eight points against the LSU Tigers and we're going to get the ball to start the second half so we can potentially go ahead and go up by two scores as we start off with a big play to Isaiah Bond over the middle of the field and then follow that up by hitting our tight end wide open on the corner route to get us right outside the red zone and I'm going for the big play but the corner is going to end up jumping the post and I'm throwing my second interception of this game as this LSU defense is not giving up on this matchup and that's just a bad turnover I can't be throwing passes like that as they're going to go ahead and capitalize and tie up this game so with a minute left in the third quarter we're searching for the lead once again in this matchup and I'm able to hit Ja'Cory Brooks on the crossing pattern to go ahead and get us across the 50 yard line then I'm able to follow that up by hitting Jermaine Burton as he beats his man on the in route to get us inside the red zone officially at the 25 and I'm going to hit Jermaine Burton again on the same in route as his man just cannot guard him on that in breaking cut as it sets us up with the first and goal and we're searching for this touchdown I'm just going to go ahead and get it myself using my legs to go ahead and give us a seven point lead on the LSU Tigers but that lead would be short lived as they will go ahead and score a touchdown to tie it up and then get a sack stopping us here on third down forcing a three and out giving them three and then here on second and 10 the next drive we're gonna get sacked again so it's third and 14 with only a minute and 30 left and we're down three points I need to go ahead and find some magic as I'm able to hit Jermaine Byrne right here on the crossing pattern he's gonna take it all the way across the 30 yard line to go ahead and set us up with at least field goal range but we're gonna go ahead and try to go for the kill right here see two seconds left I'm scrambling able to get another first down getting us officially inside the red zone at the 19 yard line with another first and 10 then I'm dropping back to throw and I'm able to find Ja'Cory Brooks to get us a first and goal from the nine yard line 30 seconds left going for the kill and we're gonna get sacked right here LSU's defense is putting up a good fight second and goal and I throw an inaccurate pass so third and goal it's gonna come down to this are we gonna tie or are we gonna win the game I'm dropping back and I'm able to find the tight end as he beats his man on the crossing pattern to go ahead and give us the win over LSU. We're going to finish the season 11-1 and as the first seed at the top of the SEC, and it's about time for the playoffs, man. As you see, we were able to finish out the season 11-1, and and in turn, we're able to secure the one seed in a first-round bye headed into the playoffs. Basketball turned out to be much of the same. We finished the regular season with only two losses and secured one seed in the March Madness tournament. Now, this is where I can truly make my mark. Two SEC championships already on my belt as a freshman, and I have a chance to add two natties to that list as well. I forget, I'll probably be the only player ever to win the Naismith and the Heisman in the same year. Or ever. I could die right now and be considered an Alabama and NCAA legend. But the more I break history, the hungrier I get, and right now, I'm hungry for a pair of natties. Coming 
off the first round bye, we do play against Ole Miss, man. This team is no pushover, as we did beat them in the regular season, but we had to beat them in overtime. And as you see, their defense is already started by making a statement, sacking me two plays in a row. And the second one is going to be a fumble six. And we're going to start this game down seven to zero. And to be honest, Ole Miss's defense will be a problem this whole game. I'll explain in a second, but as you're going to see, I don't know if it was practice or what, but we came into this game off of the bye week dead tired. We had linemen getting beat all the time just because they're out of breath. Our receivers are constantly changing in and out. And when they're in, they're not even running full speed. So the track team that you guys got used to with all of the missed messages and easy touchdowns, man, that's gone for at least this playoffs. I don't know what happened. I don't know why we're so out of breath, but we're going to have to fight for it. We're going to give it to Jam Miller right here. He's going to pick up about a gain of seven. Then on the second and three, I'm able to find my boy Isaiah Bond to get us inside the red zone officially, man. We're going to take the snap from the 22-yard line and go ahead and tie up this game by hitting Ja'Cory Brooks on the crosser wide open in the end zone. But we're still going to be down as they're going to go ahead and get themselves another seven. So down by seven points. It's a third and 15 we need this and i'm able to hit our tight end lewis wide open to get us that first down right there second and 11 i'm able to hit isaiah bond on the slant pattern to go ahead and get us back in the red zone trying to tie up this game and i'm able to hit law once right here to get us the first and goal and then the very next play i'm going to hit him again on this end zig kendrick law gets us two big catches to go ahead and tie up this game and as you see jermaine burton wasn't on the field for that whole red zone trip that's what i'm talking about man our receiver one isn't even on the field when we need him the most we're going to go ahead and try to take the lead right here headed into the half as williams makes a man miss and gets us to the 40 yard line with about 50 seconds left in the second quarter we're looking for the lead right here in this playoff game i'm able to hit isaiah bond on the in route in the very next play i'm gonna drop back and find kobe prentice on the very same route to get us inside the 10 yard line and set us up with the first and goal from the eight a play later i'm dropping back on second and goal looking for this touchdown and i'm not gonna see anything open so i'm just gonna go ahead and start scrambling pick up as many yards as possible to make it a third manageable third down looking for a touchdown man and i'm able to find kendrick law again for his second touchdown of the game but like i said look who's not on the field man jermaine burton when we need him the most two red zone drives both of our red zone drives and he hasn't even been on the field i don't know what's going on man but he's finally going to make a good play for us right here then the very next play i'm able to hit jacory brooks on the in route to get us back in the red zone trying to take this 14 point lead as we hit kobe prentice he makes a move to the outside and sets up with the first and goal then a play later on second and goal i'm able to find kobe prentice again for the wide open touchdown by seven points in this third quarter trying to go ahead and keep the lead I'm able to find isaiah bond on the crossing pattern a few plays later on a third and five i'm able to hit the running back out of the flat but he's not able to get the first down and coach Zach's going to get us to go for it on this fourth and one almost didn't get it but our running backs able to make a great play breaking a tackle and fighting for the extra yards needed and then here on the second and 13 after the sack I'm able to thread the needle to Ja'Cory Brooks for the touchdown the corner tried to jump it but the ball was just in a perfect placement and that's going to give us a 14 point lead headed into the fourth quarter our defense gets a big stop and gives us the ball right outside the end zone and yes Jax McClellan is going to score but I need to complain for a second you've noticed Jax McClellan has barely been on the field all game that's why I said the fatigue bug man he's going to come in at the two yard line to get a touchdown but he hasn't been helping us when we needed him same thing for Jermaine Burton he only has two catches because he hasn't been playing We're gonna win this game against Ole Miss as they just don't seem to have enough for us but the truth is man heading into this next game against FSU the semifinal I'm really upset with my team man as I get that you're tired but man I've been playing two sports and I'm finna gear up for two playoffs if we're gonna win next game we all need to be locked in and we all need to be on the freaking field man as FSU tied with us for the one seed but we got it based off of a tiebreaker so we're gonna need to have all hands on deck for this game not only does fsu have one of the best defenses in the nation but jordan travis finished second only behind me in the heisman race so we're gonna have to go ahead and pull out all the stops as we're already starting down 7-0 it's a third and 10 right here and we're gonna get sacked and forced to punt which would ultimately be the theme for the first half as you see only a minute and 20 seconds left and we still haven't gotten any points on the board thankfully our defense has been playing pretty good so we can still tie up this game right here but we're gonna need to pick it up on the offensive end if we want to make the national championship put it isaiah bond right here to go ahead and pick up a first down and with 30 seconds left i'm able to hit our tight end in the end zone to go ahead and tie up the game at seven and we're gonna start off the second half with this big run right here by williams as you see man our number one running back isn't in the game in the second half of a close game i just don't understand what we're doing here man speaking of don't understand what i'm doing i'm gonna throw a bad pick right here my tight end had a step but i guess his fatigue man he just lost it and they're able to get that interception and go score so we're down seven points and jace mcclellan finally decides to show up but it's gonna be for a loss of one so now i have to throw from behind they're giving me an illegal forward pass right there so that play that could have been a first down is actually just going to be a loss of yards and a loss of down and then we're going to drop this play right here on fourth and 16 forced to punt they're going to go ahead and get another seven and we're down 14 points right here in the fourth quarter desperately trying to score as fast as possible if we want any chance at coming back in this game i'm going to slide forward for about a gate of eight and then the next play on second down i'm able to find jacory brooks on the crossing pattern but he drops this ball man as they're just not giving me any help right now either they're taking plays off or when they're in the game they're dropping the ball as you see third down no jermaine burton man but we're able to hit 
hit Ja'Cory Brooks right here to go ahead and pick up the first down and give us a first and goal as we're fighting in this fourth quarter. First and goal, man, and guess who isn't on the field? Jermaine Burton. That's what I'm saying, man. Jason McClellan isn't on the field either. I don't know what it is, but we're able to hit Kobe Prentice right here to get us a touchdown and only put us down seven, and our defense gets us a stop, man. So if we can go ahead and score right here, we can tie up this game in the fourth quarter. Two minutes left. I'm dropping back to throw, and I throw an interception. This was a terrible pick, man, and it was just all my frustrations mounting as why is Jermaine Burton? Why is Jason McClellan? Why is Ja'Cory Brooks? Why are all these players taking all these plays off in the playoffs, man? We made it all the way to the semifinal just to get our hearts broken, and I have my fair share of the blame, but that's some bullshit. I'm beyond upset with my teammates and the product we put on the field in that semifinal game and really the playoffs in general. Dudes complaining they tired, taking plays off, crucial plays at that. Like, I haven't been playing both sports and busting my butt for this school all season. I know I have to let it go and focus on March Madness, but it's really got me thinking if I want to continue to put my body on the line for dudes who only seem to be out for themselves. Hopefully these playoffs don't end as disappointingly as the last. The first game of the tournament comes against the UNC Tar Heels, and we're going to have to be on our A game, as during the regular season, we only beat this team by one point. We're starting off in the ISO. I hit a step back three in the defender's face, and I follow that up by going back to the ISO, hitting the same move, going with another snatch back, and pulling up for a mid-range to get our first five points of this game. RJ Davis is going to go ahead and smack a three off the off-ball screen to tie it up. Keep taking advantage of my matchup, knowing this guard can't guard me, and I get my third straight bucket to start this game. I'm guarding RJ Davis, and I get the chase down block, but unfortunately, we weren't able to get any points, so here with the ball again they do get a miss but armando gets the second chance rebound and gets the points go ahead and tie up this game but we're going to take the lead right back here we have a fast break bucket as mark sears hits the wide open corner three to go ahead and put us up three that's my first basket by any teammate but armando's going to keep finishing strong around the rim him a layup right there and then rj davis is going to make this open mid-range jumper give them a one point lead but we're going to take the lead right back as i hit this pump fake suck the defense and then mark sears hits another wide open three and as you can see calls this timeout we're going to get subbed out for the first time we check back in and we're still up by four points so I come off the screen and hit Grant Nelson on the easy pick and roll and as the second half is coming to a close we get a good defensive stop and on the transition Rylan Griffin finds me in the corner as I smack a wide open three to further extend our lead by eight points and with about seven seconds left I call the ISO for the last play of the half trying to go up by 10 and I hit RJ Davis with the spin dunk off of the hesitation next time we have the ball I drive and kick to Rylan Griffin for another three to put us up by 11 and our shooting is not going to stop there as here we call the floppy and get Mark Sears off the screen to bang yet another three so we're starting to run away with this game and we're gonna do just that as i hit rylan griffin off the pick and fade to get us another three to put us up 16 points as you see fourth quarter ends and unc just doesn't have enough to come back and we're headed to the second round of this tournament and this is a nice win as unc was one of the schools i almost committed to so us beating them in the playoffs is a good feeling as we head into the next game against the hoosers we already beat them in the regular season so i'm hoping we can repeat that as i start the game off with the three and that's going to set the tone for our offense for this game as i'm going to go with the pick and roll to pringle and the very next possession out i come off the screen and hit a fadeaway three to go ahead and put us up by seven points indiana will keep scoring back but our offense was just on fire i'm going to go ahead and hit my third three of the first quarter right here i would eventually get subbed out and when i come back in, in the second quarter we're still up seven points i go to the iso and indiana tries to help so i hit grant nelson in the corner for a wide open three but by no stretch of the imagination is this game over as indiana is going to come and hit a three of their own and then they're going to get a defensive stop and get this tough layup to go in the basket as the second quarter is winding down we're going to go with the pick and roll right here i'm going to come off the screen and get us a dunk to get our lead back a little further next possession we try to go with the pick and roll with grant nelson but they come and help so i'm just going to go ahead and hit rylan griffin wide open in the corner four and another three and coming back into the third quarter we get a nice block right here i get the rebound and this is going to be an easy fast break bucket as i'm going to take this all the way to the goal to give us a full 10 point lead and miss again and we're just going to start getting more transition buckets i'm going to take this all the way to the cup as well when we finally get back in the half court set we're back in the pick and roll and i go with the drive and kick and i find rylan griffin wide open in the corner again playoff time i don't know why people are still leaving him wide open but here i'm going to go ahead and beat my man in the post for an easy layup we're going to go with the floppy play right here and who else but rylan griffin to hit the wide open three off the double screen which would give us a 13 point lead to be able to go ahead and best indiana as we head into the semi-final against baylor if we win this game we're in the college national championship and even though baylor is a good team we're locked in this game as duke is in the final which means i get to play my high school teammate in cooper flag if we go ahead and win this game and as you see it was close all the way up until halftime i wasn't really scoring much that's why we're already near the end not very many highlights that was only 
my fifth point of the first half. And starting on the second half, man, we're going to have a bad defensive lapse and give them a wide open corner three to give them the lead. Here we go with the pick and fade to Grant Nelson. He's going to take a dribble and smack the three to give us our lead back by one. Baylor's not going to go away, though, as their big's going to hit this tough layup. I'm going to go ahead and get a dunk, though, and I'm going to get a technical foul for hanging on the rim. This was a big dunk, and I wanted to make a statement. And even though we're going to give up some free points right here, I feel like it was worth it because after that dunk, man, we went on a run. We hit Mark Sears right here on the floppy for the three to only put us down by one point. We're going to get the ball back right here, and I'm going to hit a step back three to go ahead and take the lead back. Then off of a defensive stop, we're going to hit Rylan Griffin in transition to go ahead and get us another three. Then running in transition again, Mark Sears is going to find me in the lane, and I'm going to go ahead and dunk and hang on the rim again. Not enough to get a technical foul, but enough for them to feel me, though. Up five points headed into the fourth quarter, and I'm hitting Mark Sears wide open for another three to go ahead and further extend this lead. And as we head into the fourth quarter, I'm coming off the pick and roll, waiting for my big to cut to the basket, and I get him for a wide open mid-range. The reason our pick and roll game is so effective is because the defense always feels like they have to help on me. So I'm going to come off the screen. You see the big is going to sit. So I'm going to throw the lob in the lane to get us another bucket. Go with the pick and roll again. And as you see, they're just helping. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Grant Nelson for the wide open three. Being such a scoring threat is just so good for this offense. With our shooters around us, man, as soon as they help, we're going to find somebody open. As like I said, they help on the pick and roll and our big gets another dunk. And then here I'm running in the lane and Mark Sears gets a crazy finish to go ahead and put us up by enough points to secure this semifinal victory, man, as we punch our ticket to the national championship against Duke and Cooper Flag, playing my high school teammate in the national championship. How poetic can that be? But we've been dominating all season long. And yes, I do feel confident coming into this game against the Blue Devils. But to be honest, this will be a successful season win or loss. Led Alabama, one of the best teams in the nation to the playoffs in both sports. Even though the football finish was a little disappointing, if we can go ahead and make up for that with a national championship win in basketball, all will be forgiven, man. So I'm making sure I'm locked in as I start off with the ankle breaker into the fadeaway mid-range. Trying to make sure we win this game, man, as I'm not trying to have another disappointing playoff performance. I come off the screen and hit yet another mid-range. Started this game off perfect, but then we're going to get ripped, and then they're going to go ahead and get this transition basket, which is actually going to turn into an and one, which is going to give them their first lead of this game. Then I'm going to miss a wide open three, and we're not going to get the rebound. So they're back on the break again, dribbling down the court. They gave the ball to Proctor. He's looking for somebody, and he's able to find Cooper Flag to make a tough layup. Go ahead and put them up by three points in this game, as I know that this is going to be a dog fight. Next possession down, I call it ISO. I'm trying to break down their guard. I'm going to hit a few tweens and finally find my lane to the left side and go in for the wide open dunk as I beat him off the dribble. Then we go with the pick and fade. I'm able to hit Grant Nelson 4-3 as we take our lead back against the Blue Devils, but they're going to keep fighting. Jared McCann is going to hit this off dribble mid-range coming off the screen to go ahead and tie the game back up. But we're going to take the lead right back as we run a floppy play to Mark Sears and he's going to bang the wide open three, giving us the lead before I got subbed out. And we come back in near the halftime and we're down three points. And as Cooper makes that tough layup on me, make that five. We're going to run a floppy for Rylan Griffin to get him wide open in the corner to cut the lead down to two headed into the second half and with five seconds left they're actually going to go ahead and score right here leave cooper flag wide open and he's going to bang the three to head into the half to give them a five point lead as this is going to be a tough game to win i'm going to come out the half hitting a tough layup right here but they're going to go ahead and throw the lob keeping their lead and we're trying to cut into it grant nelson's going to go ahead and hit this three right here and we finally get ourselves a defensive stop so we're coming down on this offensive possession down two points i'm going to pick and roll with my big and i'm just going to hit the fadeaway mid-range after i create that space to the left duke isn't going for any of that though as Cooper Flag is going to come off the motion and hit a contested three in my face to keep their lead man every time we score they're just going to score right back we finally get a stop and I'm able to get the and one to tie up the game but of course I wouldn't last long as Zeus going to get the ball back and they're going to smack a contested corner three they're just hitting all their shots right now tried to get me open for a corner three but the defender fought through the screen so Mark Sears forces up this shot with one second left and it's actually going to go in that's going to give us a good lead on Duke the last two minutes of the fourth quarter with about a six point lead and Mark Sears is going to make that nine by hitting another three right here Cooper Flag is going to drive in on me to hit this hook shot to make it seven. But here, I'm going to go ahead and ISO Cooper, try to put this game away. I'm going to blow past him. But there's just too much going on in the paint. So I find Rylan Griffin wide open to put us up by 10. And Duke put up a good fight, man. But we just outshot them in the end. And we're able to get ourselves a national championship victory as a freshman. We beat my high school teammate in Cooper Flag and one of the best teams in the nation. To get ourselves a national championship victory, man, making the football playoffs and then winning a basketball national championship. This has been a season for the record books, man. It's not only that I win the Nation. Smith Award, but I won the Heisman as well, capping that off with two SEC championships, football and basketball, and then topping that off with the Natty. This has been a season that no one will ever be able to replicate, so it's time to start asking that question, am I one of the best athletes of all time?